I was finishing up my PhD and I had a decision to make. What to do after my PhD? And this was a decision I really agonized over. So this is the best pen I have. And what, what uh... This actually uh, is a gift from a thesis that I uh, reviewed for University of British Columbia. Ah, oh, okay. And, uh, Okay. All right, sir. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> my name is Daniel Himmelstein. My online moniker is D. Himmel, with a tagline of Digital Craftsman of the Biodata Revolution. I'm from New Hampshire, born in 1989. Prematurely. <laughs> Are we rolling? Yep. So we're in the studio today. Getting real pro studios. Yeah, John's going to sign the dissertation page. It'll be the first of three signatures I need to get a PhD. Yeah. Woo! Nice. Woo! Nice. All right. Got Cucumor awesome. in the light? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pretty bad. Yeah, you got to get in there. Uh, that last year, my PhD, I was really pushing to finish it up. I had actually... Um, even forbid myself from drinking or doing any other type of psychoactive substance as an incentive to hurry up. And I applied to Human Longevity Inc., HLI, and the University of Pennsylvania in the Green Lab where I would be what's called a postdoctoral fellow. I had been offered this job from HLI. They put a deadline for me to accept the offer. I really had saved the decision for the last moment. I was in France on a little vacation, and I was in a place where I didn't even really have cell phone data or anything. So it was me alone, there was one friend there with me, and that gave me some clarity and solitude to um, reflect. To really cement the decision, I felt like I needed to have it on video, uh, so it was definite. So I couldn't go back. The day I made that video essentially was the deadline. I had gone on this walk alone where I went to that tidal island uh, along the shore there in St. Malo, France. And that's actually when I saw the bagpipe. I started, you know, thinking, wow, I have to make this decision tomorrow, and this is a really cool spot. Why don't I make the decision at this spot and, you know, do uh, put it on YouTube just for something fun? Welcome to St. Malo, France, on the Pacific Ocean. It was kind of rush the planning, um, which is why I messed up and said that we were on the Pacific Ocean rather than the Atlantic. People never let me live that down now. Over there, the walled city. Beauty in every direction. We're standing atop Grand Pa. It's an island, a tidal island. I went back to the friend. I'm like, we got to shoot this video. We got to go as soon as possible because if we don't do it now, you know, I, we're going to lose enthusiasm, or I'm not, I'm not going to be interested in doing this uh, peculiar and bizarre <laughs> way of accepting a job offer. And we're here today because I have a major decision over my future. What to do after I graduate with my PhD and how to continue my career as a scientist. So we're very excited to see what my future holds. We could have used a better microphone that got rid of the wind. We, we didn't have that technology. Option one, to work at the Human Longevity Inc. Uh, CEO, Craig Ventor, a pioneer of the human genome. I was thinking to myself, I was getting excited about making the video. How can I make this video as ridiculous as possible um, while still maintaining an iota of professionalism? Option two, studying at the University of Pennsylvania as a postdoc with Dr. Casey Green, an old colleague and friend of mine and mentor. I think it 
captured my excitement for having finally made a decision and captured my excitement to move to the next career stage. Now, let's continue to see the decision. It came to me that I should have the decision in an envelope that I walk and pick up. The sort of perceptual reason for doing that is that the decision is being given to me and that I'm not making the decision. And I don't know for some reason that appealed to me. So what I, ha I had here is obviously I made this, but I went to a little shop and got this <laughs> beautiful card. And the decision is, and on the back wrote, Philadelphia. Heading to where the Constitution was signed, to the laboratory Woo. of Dr. Green, where I, we, I will use HetNets to integrate biological data to understand human disease with a focus on capturing the nuances and specificities of biology. So now here, let me sign the official agreement with the University of Pennsylvania to formalize my future. It took overnight to upload to YouTube because we were on such a bad little bed and breakfast Wi-Fi. So I actually didn't get the video out until the day after the decision was due. And then the participation agreement, which I hate to sign because it gives the university ownership of things I think should be in the public domain. Uh, I sent it to my PI, Casey Green, at Penn. I didn't send it to HLI, but maybe they've seen it. But Casey has found a way that we can make our research public, so that's great. I'd like to thank all the mentors who have helped me up to this point. And by the time I got to Penn, a lot of the people had seen it, so I, I was already, uh, shall we say, notorious. <laughs> and I look forward to my future as a scientist and working in Philadelphia and several more years with Catini the Cat and Cayman is a great friend. Thank you. It just seemed fitting to uh, finish it with bagpipes. Wow, look at all these other uh, suggestions. Other people made videos about their PhD too, wow. This chick could have my video beat. Wow. Yeah. So had I made the other decision, which would have been to accept the job at Human Longevity Inc., um, which was at the time in Mountain View, uh, it would not probably have turned out well. So this is a, a recent issue of Nature. And here in the news section, we have an article, Experts Pan Study Claiming DNA Can Predict Facial Traits. And this turns out I would have been working on this study, which was largely derided. HLI has a potential conflict of interest in encouraging restricted access to DNA databases. So if you know me, you know that uh, restricted access to data is the antithesis of my existence and uh, I don't think I would have been happy you know being pushed into that project and that publication I chose Penn because I realized that my role is to make science more open is to advocate for the sharing and freedom of knowledge and I wasn't going to get to do that at HLI. Retrospect, the decision turned out great, but it's a little bit unrealistic to say that I could have predicted things would have turned out this way. And, and I'm not sure you really can.
can. 